In the year 1905, at an isolated cow pasture eight miles east of Dayton, Ohio, the world changed. As the hot and humid afternoons of summer changed into the cool, crisp mornings of fall in 1905, nearby residents and local farmers caring for their fields were witnessing with regularity a scene that would become a defining characteristic of the 20th century, the sight and sound of an airplane flying overhead. Orville and Wilbur Wright made aviation history with their first ever man-powered aircraft. After originally trying their luck in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, the brothers moved back to Dayton, Ohio. Why was Dayton an ideal place for the Wright brothers to invent and perfect their aircraft? What drove them to do so and what made them so successful? The Gem City was an idyllic place for the invention of flight. One reason was because the city was close to home for the brothers. The Wright family moved to Ohio two years after Wilbur was born. Two years later, Orville was born at the family home on Hawthorne Street. Throughout their childhood, the family moved a lot before returning permanently to Dayton in 1884. Even though the brothers set out for Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to try their hand at flying, they ultimately made Dayton their home and used Huffman Prairie as their flying field. During the late 19th century and the early 20th century, Dayton was quickly becoming a bustling town. New businesses and foundries were opening, streetcars and railways were making the city more accessible, and engineering was booming. During the last decade of the 19th century, the city would emerge as the world center for the production of cash registers, and was also an early leader in the bicycle and automobile industries in America. Many new and influential businesses were arriving in this area. The National Cash Register Corporation was an important part of Dayton and may have attributed to the Wright Brothers' success. This company, which made cash registers, grew slowly, producing only 16,000 registers in its first decade in operation. Through aggressive marketing and advertising, by 1914 the National Cash Register Company was producing 110,000 cash registers per year. In 1906, the company manufactured the first electric cash register invented by Charles F. Kettering. In 1909, after leaving the NCR Corporation, Kettering and Edward Deeds founded the Dayton Engineering Laboratories Company, known as Delco. Kettering was involved in a number of research projects at Delco, inventing a portable electric generator and some important automobile innovations. Kettering is credited with inventing the first reliable electric ignition system for automobiles. This development allowed drivers to start the automobile engine without having to crank it. Delco made it easier to create parts used for the Wright Brothers aircraft. The brothers no longer had to send away for ordered parts, rather they could be made within the city. Transportation was another valuable source that the Wright brothers found in Dayton while perfecting their flying machine. Traveling to and from Huffman Prairie Field was easier with railway cars and streetcars, and other companies were making some of the parts used for airplanes. They could be picked up quickly rather than taking time to ship the equipment. Huffman Prairie was another benefit to bringing their invention back to Dayton. Huffman Prairie, located in Area C of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, was available at no charge. Torrance Huffman, owner of the pasture, allowed the Wright brothers to use the field as long as they moved the cows and horses before taking flights, which according to Wilbur was a burden. We are in a large meadow. In addition to cattle, there have been a dozen horses in the pasture, and we have been at much trouble to get them safely before making trials. Although the livestock were an inconvenience, the ability to use the pasture allowed for funding to go more for the aircraft design and construction, and less for the area to take trial flights. It is my belief that flight is possible, and while I am taking up the investigation for pleasure rather than profit, I think there is a slight possibility of achieving fame and fortune from it. From an early age, Orville and Wilbur Wright were fascinated by the idea of flight. It had been sparked by a toy shaped like a helicopter that their father had given them as children. As they grew older, it was Otto Lilienthal's fatal glider accident that continued to intrigue them. Otto Lilienthal, a German pioneer, was most known for his successful gliding and became known as the Glider King. Newspapers and magazines in many countries published photographs of Lilienthal's gliding, favorably influencing public and scientific opinion about the possibility of flying machines becoming practical reality after ages of ideal fantasy and unscientific tinkering. And with that, the Wright brothers began to invent something some people would not have thought possible, the first ever man-powered aircraft. The first efforts started in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, using the wind to their advantage and successfully flying just a short distance and lasting at most 12 seconds. I think it would be a good plan to give out an interview in which the announcement is made of suing all who have any connection with infringing flying machines. 
Soon, they were back in Dayton, perfecting their aircraft and adding engines. With the new improvements, the brothers also sought out patents for their invention. A patent is a set of exclusive rights granted by a state to an inventor or the assignee for a limited period of time in exchange for a public disclosure of an invention. I do not compete for trophies. The brothers filed patents over the course of some years for their flying machine. On March 23, 1903, they applied for a patent on their method of control of the aircraft. The patent, which they wrote themselves, was rejected. In early 1904, they hired Ohio patent attorney Henry Talman to help gain the patent. On May 22, 1906, they were granted U.S. patent number 821393 for a flying machine. Over the years, the Wright brothers had to defend their patent, suing foreign and domestic aviators and companies in an attempt to collect licensing fees. The Wright brothers found themselves in a lawsuit with Glenn Curtis, an aviation pioneer and founder of the Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company. They warned Curtis not to infringe their patent by profiting from flying or selling aircraft that used alerons, a device that helps steer airplanes, which the Wright brothers had invented. Curtis refused to pay license fees to the Wrights and sold an airplane to the Aeronautics Society in 1909. The brothers filed a lawsuit, beginning a years-long legal conflict. Foreign aviators were sued as well for flying at U.S. exhibitions. The Curtis people suggested that the Wright brothers had made a patent so vague that they would attempt to sue for anything, proposing that the brothers were only looking to make money off their flying machine. The Wright brothers won their initial case against Curtis in February 1913, but the decision was appealed. The patent dispute continued for several years until it was resolved during World War I. During the years they were working to develop a practical flying machine, the Wright brothers remained quiet about their invention. They announced they had invented a flying machine, but they were reluctant to answer questions on how the machine worked and how obvious problems from the past had been solved. On May 23, 1904, reporters were invited to witness the Flyer 2's first flight attempt. Inclement weather and engine troubles kept the plane from taking off. This was one of few instances that the Wright brothers allowed the media and others to witness their flight. Isn't it astonishing that all these secrets have been preserved for so many years just so we could discover them? What made the Wright brothers so successful? Throughout the early 20th century, the Wright brothers accomplished many feats in aviation history. They are generally credited with inventing and building the world's first successful airplane and making the first controlled, powered, and sustained, heavier-than-air human flight. On December 17, 1903, their aircraft, known as the Flyer, took the first ever successful flight, which lasted 12 seconds. After the initial flight at Kitty Hawk, the brothers moved back to their hometown and continued working and perfecting their aircraft. On September 20, 1904, they reached a milestone. Wilbur flew the first complete circle in history by a heavier-than-air power machine, covering 4,080 feet in a minute and a half. Orville and Wilbur Wright's best flights took place on November 9th and December 1st, 1904. Each flight, piloted once by Orville and once by Wilbur, exceeded five minutes, covering almost three miles in four circles. By the end of 1904, they had accumulated around 50 minutes in the air and 105 flights over Huffman Prairie Flying Field. In 1908, while in Kitty Hawk, another milestone was reached, passenger flights. However, on September 17, 1908, a devastating accident marked another first in aviation history. Army Lieutenant Thomas Selfridge joined Orville Wright on one of his flights, serving as an official observer. A few minutes into the flight, at an altitude of 100 feet, a propeller split and shattered, sending the aircraft out of control. Orville suffered a broken leg and four broken ribs, but survived. Army Lieutenant Selfridge wasn't as lucky. He suffered a fractured skull and died. This was the first ever airplane crash fatality. The Wright brothers returned to their hometown in 1910, and Dayton hosted a lavish homecoming celebration. From 1910 through 1916, Huffman Prairie Flying Field was used for the Wright Company School of Aviation and the Wright Exhibition Company. The school trained 115 pilots who were instructed by Orville and his assistants. Several of those who were trained at the school became famous pilots. After a trip to Boston in April 1912, Wilbur Wright became ill. Upon returning to Dayton, he was diagnosed with typhoid fever. On May 30th, he died at the family home. 53 years after his death, he was selected for the Hall of Fame for Great Americans. After his brother's death, Orville became president of the Wright Company. He sold the company in 1915. Orville made his last flight in 1918. 
1930, he received the first Daniel Guggenheim Medal for the promotion of aeronautics. He was elected a member of the National Academy of Science in 1936. In 1944, Orville took his last flight at Wright Field, more than 40 years after his historic first flight. The wingspan of the plane he was in, the Constellation, was longer than the distance of his first flight. In 40 years, it was obvious how far flight had come. He died in 1948. The Wright's powered aircraft was the first great invention of the 20th century. Orville and Wilbur Wright made history with their flying machine. In the centuries since then, flight has improved immensely. Flight no longer lasts minutes or seconds. Now you can arrive at far off places in a matter of hours. Flight may not be what it is today if it weren't for Orville and Wilbur Wright.